means. You know the text, you get the objectives, and you are confident with the means. Okay? And you understand something? That the means are as important as the objectives. You cannot use wrong means to get good objectives or right objectives. The right, the means are in fact per se objectives. So you need right means to get right objectives and you need for that to know the text, to understand the objectives and to be confident with the means. This is it. So there there is this. These were the scholars of the beginning. Very confident doing this. Abu Hanifa had no problem. Because he was knowing the text, understanding the means, getting the objectives and knowing the field within which he was working. This is what we have to do. When it comes now to the objectives, we extract from the objectives, and, and this is where the Muslim scholars, the fuqaha, the jurists, when they are dealing as men with a society, they try to find, as I told you, the limit and the functions. And say, okay, this is a specific field, but before coming to that field, we have to go upstream to uh, what is the main objective for a woman to be a woman as a human being. And then you come to something which is, in fact, everything in Islam. It's about what? Liberation. But the first liberation is what? The deepest and the most essential liberation is what? Is to liberate yourself from the society? No. It's to liberate yourself from yourself. The first liberation is ego. Is to liberate. And never forget that. Because this is the starting point of everything. You speak about freedom, come. Tell me your definition of freedom and then we know where you are. If freedom is to do what you want, that's fine. But I have a question before you tell me what you want. Are you sure that what you want is what you want? Are you sure? Because people are playing your psychology. They can make you think that you want what you want, but they want you to want what exactly they want. <laughs> Don't laugh. It's our life. This is life. This is it. When the people, you know, we speak about being brainwashed in Palestine, for example, why? Because we know the power of the media. The media can change your mind and you think, oh yes, it's obvious. They are equal and I'm against the oppressors and the oppressed and they are all the same. I'm against both. So you end up thinking exactly what the people are thinking. You go to the suburbs and some you know, people say, yes, I'm against the system. And you look at them and say, it's strange, you're against the system. They are all dressed the same way. So in fact, the system is using you to think that you are against the system. And at the end, you pay because you are part of the market. The market is colonizing you when you think that you are freeing yourself. So when it comes to women, this is a very important thing. This is why I was speaking about the status. And I was speaking about liberation and that the objectives that everything in Islam is telling us, you as a human being, you have to liberate yourself on your own self. And through, it's a liberation process. It's to come back to your heart and to ask yourself. And this is why, this is a, a, a missing discourse in Islam when it comes to women. And this is why it's important. You know when the Prophet, peace be upon him, came, upon him came back to Mecca, he did two things. After 20 years of struggle, the people wanted to kill him, okay? He came back. And I always tell the people, you know, he left Mecca standing up. And he was oppressed. He came back victorious and he was prostrated. Okay, in resistance, I stand up. In victory, he is the one I'm the servant. I'm here to serve justice. He came back and he asked the people, what do you think I'm going to do with you? Think I'm going to kill you? Look at that. And he said, Adhabu antum tulaqa, you are free. No, you are free. First, social liberation, political liberation. Go. What is the second act you did? Understand that the most important thing was not your freedom now. He went to the Kaaba and he destroyed all the idols. For someone who is coming from a spiritual take, understanding, what does it mean? I say, be careful. The true liberation is not the social liberation. The true liberation is in the Kaaba, these idols. The true freedom is not to do what you want, as if you think it's to come back to your heart and to ask yourself, do I want what I want? Am I free? 
Am, am, am I spiritually free? And this is a process that we have to come back from this, you know, the, the struggle for what? Only for rights to come to. We have to come back to this discussion. We need today the Muslim women to come back to the spiritual take, the spiritual teaching, and to understand that. And by the way, here you are, mercy for the world. Here you are, mercy for the world. Here in the, the, the society and the consumerist society to come back with this true discussion. Say, so I'm striving for my liberation, my spiritual liberation. I want to be an autonomous being, not only a social actor. I want to be a social actor, but first, my first question is this one. Because my religious message is to be completely free. This freedom of my heart, of heart, the freedom of my mind, the true freedom. And this is something which is an essential thing. When you come back to the Quran and you listen, God made you love faith. But you have another verse telling you, the beauty of, you know, the Zuyina Linnas hope. It means that Allah beautifies the love of superficial things. Sexuality, money, and all this. In fact, the love was beautified. The love was beautified. The other verse is not saying this. What was beautified was faith. So to get the beauty, you have to come back to your faith, you have to come back to your heart. And in your heart, you will get the true love. The other one is, the love was beautified. In other words, there are two ways to love. A superficial way that you think that what you love is beautiful because it's love. My heart is speaking, be careful. Sometimes love should be reassessed because you can think that you love but you love apparently, superficially, emotionally. To love spiritually means come back to your heart and ask you the right question. Look at these two verses and you will understand all the Islamic messages here. And for women, this is the deep discussion. And this is the, the but by the way, why am I saying this? It's not only a discussion about women, it's a common discussion. But here we have to come with this very powerful message which is, which kind of liberation do we want to achieve if it's about faithfulness? So this is a liberating process, a spiritual, spiritual five minutes, no, no, 10 minutes. This was the starting point. <laughs> and when it comes to this, it has many dimensions because it's, it's about what? You'll find in the book a, a new chart of the achievements and the objectives, the ethics, the values that we want to achieve. It's about stability, balance, inner life, well-being, development, inner development. All this, these are, these were not in what the scholars were talking about in the past. They were talking about the six, and you will see all the scholars are coming. You know, in Islam you have six principles to protect the deen, one apple, one. You have this from the scholars of the past. The Shatibi came with this by saying what we have to protect is, we have to protect our religion, our personal integrity, our minds, our money, our families. That's fine. This was the path. But today we, have, we are in a very complex world. It's much more complex. And in the 14th century, in the time I had this intuition, it's not enough. We need more of these objectives. We need also the objective of the heart. We need to achieve something in our heart. In our society now, with this psychological pressure, this consumer society, we have to come with a very strong discourse. What do you want to achieve as a woman? Where is your freedom? Where is your freedom as a woman in a consumerist society? Don't tell me only about rights, because if you don't want the scholars to speak about rights, don't start the discussion about your rights. Start the discussion with your being. And your being is, here I'm free. Because this is what I want. And all the discussion about the head start is wrong if you only put it as the right and not the right. It's the question of being. If I want to do it, the right is, I should be free to do it. And I should be free not to do it. It's my choice. But if it's my choice, I have to understand the choice is for what? It's a liberating process. It should be a spiritual liberating process if it's understood rightly.
not only, you know, because this is why it's very important. If you come with this discussion, you just say to the men, to the fathers, to the brothers, who give you the right to impose this onto a woman if you don't understand the very meaning of it. And the very meaning of it is it should be done only if it's understood as a liberating spiritual process. And you cannot decide this for the others. You can't decide this. You know this? This is why you come with two strong discourses. The same one, but two strong addresses. You speak to the Muslim saying, it's against Islam to impose onto a woman to wear it. You cannot do that because you don't understand. You come with rules and it has to be to, to, and it has to do with freedom. Can you decide when I am free? You can't. It's my the spiritual freedom is coming from me, it's not coming from you. And if you decide it, it's by definition against my freedom. So <coughs> remove yourself from my picture and my story. The other way it's also to say this to our fellow citizens. If it's my freedom, if it's my spiritual freedom, who are you to come with your freedom to impose on to me the only way you think it's right to be free? So it's not freedom. It's imposition in the name of your freedom. So this is something which is a deep discussion here, but this is the starting point of this liberty. And it has to do with everything. It has to do with your being, it has to do with your spiritual endeavor. Any Muslim community, which is not giving the means for the man and the woman to go through this process is not respecting the rights of the woman as human being. The right of women to be free and to get a sense of femininity. Who am I? Something which is so important. And it comes to everything. It has to do with my autonomy, my personal autonomy. I should be autonomous. Spiritually autonomous. It means that I should get the knowledge. You should, I should have the knowledge to be free. So any society which is not providing me with knowledge, it's against who I should be. So you cannot say this. If in the Quran you have as something which is uh, interpersonal relationship, <coughs> they are dressed, they protect you. A woman could be a protection for a man and a man should be a protection for a woman. To be a protection first is to be to be something, to be free. So give me the means to be who I want to be and who I am to be. So this is something which is so important. It's so important to understand that here we have this discussion. It also has about why the Muslim scholars were, you know, we have things about even sexuality. It has to do also with this. Why in Islam sexuality is not only for procreation. It's not, it has to do with well-being, it has to do with something when the man, you know, with this natural contraception. And by the way, don't start speaking as Muslims as if you were quoting the Christian tradition. Because it's wrong. We don't have the same positions on this. This is wrong. Anyone who is telling you we have the same position is not studying Islam. For two reasons. First, that contraception in Islam is not forbidden. Natural contraception is not forbidden. The Prophet was leading the people and knowing what? You know that scholars in the 18th century were saying a man could do the natural uh, uh, contraception by the coit interruptors, as we say, with one condition. He has to ask his wife. Because by doing this, he's not respecting to her potential rights. Uh, the first one is to get uh, uh, a child, and the second one is pleasure. Saying that in this relationship, sexuality is not only about a mean to achieve something else. It's in an end per se. This is Islamic. But the Muslims don't know the religion. They don't study. And then about abortion. Yes, the general rule is to say we are not going to promote it, we are against it. But there is something in Islam which is the fatwa. What is a fatwa? A fatwa is a legal opinion. And what is a legal opinion? It's a specific decision in a specific situation.